Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, SFA for including Fair Trade USA today. Um, as she said, not only is it really exciting after being at a lot of fancy food shows to get to be on this side of the stage, but to share the stage with a panel of incredible women doing really cool things um, is an honor. So thank you guys very much for including us. Uh, as she said, I, my name is Molly Ronaldo. I'm from Fair Trade USA, um, which is one of probably many Fair Trade certifications you've heard about. Um, we're based in Oakland, so just right across the bridge. Um, and we're actually the leading certifier of Fair Trade goods in North America. So odds are, if you've seen a Fair Trade seal on a product in North America, it's probably ours. Um, Today, I will talk obviously about what is fair trade, but what I really want to do is dive into a few of the biggest myths and kind of misconceptions that are out there about what it means for a brand to be certified or what actually happens with certification. Um, but to start and give you a few little building blocks about what fair trade is, at our core, fair trade is a standard setting body, meaning we write a standard that all farms and processors who are fair trade certified have to adhere to and are audited against on an annual basis. This standard is a myriad of different requirements. Um, they're grouped into social, economic, and environmental. So social, we're talking about things like the freedom to associate and the ability to actually have some say in your working conditions. Economic, we're talking about things like minimum wage, um, a reasonable number of working hours. Um, and then environmental can be things like what do you do with wastewater, what pesticides can and cannot be used on a farm. Um, that's just a few of the litany of things that these farms are required to adhere to and, and have to pass their annual audits on. So that's one piece of it. The second piece is obviously us working with communities. So when a brand buys a fair trade certified ingredient, they pay one cost, but it's actually two separate price points. One is their ingredient cost. Flows through the supply chain as any other ingredient you're purchasing, certified or not. There is another cost in there called a premium, a community development premium. When that's paid, it flows directly into a bank account that is owned and operated by the farmers and workers that created that project. We go in, we help those farmers to organize, gain the skills that they need. They conduct a needs assessment so they can identify good opportunities for investment within their communities. And then they get to choose democratically, everyone with an equal vote, how they want to reinvest that money into their communities. And then finally, we're working with consumers to educate them on what is fair trade? Why should they be looking for it? Why is it important that they need to care about the thousands of hands that went into putting that product on their shelf? So this is all different pieces of, the, of kind of the fair trade machine and program that we're working on. So now I want to jump into three really big myths. So my job is I'm a brand partnerships manager, meaning I support any brand that's choosing to source a fair trade certified ingredient. And that's from anything from helping them find that and sourcing to how do you share your impact stories, how do you engage your consumers so that you can actually source more on fair trade terms. So these are all things I hear a lot. First and foremost, premium dollars don't actually make it to, to farmers. When I hear this, it hurts my soul. Yes, they a thousand percent make it to your farmers. And the reason I can say this without a doubt is because this is audited on. Those things I mentioned before, um, having to conduct a needs assessment, the fact that farmers are democratically voting on how they want to reinvest. When a group of farmers becomes fair trade certified, they conduct that needs assessment. Then they get in this general assembly. They all vote on how they want to invest those premium dollars, and they create a plan of as they get more and more money, what are those dollars going to be going to in projects? And then they put those projects into action. These are all things that are checked it within their annual audit. So there's one thing that's protecting it. The other part of that is these are these impact stories, these things that are happening at Origin, these are actually things that we are providing to brands to be able to tell their impact stories. And then finally, every single player within a fair trade supply chain has to report quarterly on their purchases and their sales of fair trade goods. And then we have an incredible certification team that goes through and verifies all of these transactions, making sure not only that the amount of fair trade ingredients that were produced are what's being sold and marked with our seal to the consumers, but also making sure that those premium dollars are correlating to the right amount and are flowing all the way back to farmers. 
So there's quite a few checks on there to make sure that these dollars are actually getting to your farmers. Second big myth, a fair trade product has to be 100% fair trade certified ingredients to carry the seal, false. Um, especially in this environment that we work in with consumer packaged goods, it's almost more of a rarity to find a single ingredient product. Unless we're talking about bananas, a bag of, cocoa, a bag of coffee, or a pure cocoa bar, it's a little bit more difficult that one person's gonna be able to say, I have 100% one ingredient and one ingredient only in my product. So in order to bring more people into the fair trade family of brands, in order to support more farmers throughout the world, we had to come up with something that included everyone. But the caveat to that is we never wanted to change the transparency or the clarity to the consumer and make sure that we were being as honest as we possibly could through these brands. So we came up with the three different, basically the three different labeling options for brands. So on that left-hand side, if you do have a bag of coffee, if you do have a bunch of bananas, if you do um, see a single ingredient product or a multiple ingredient product where they were able to certify everything, you're gonna see that label for 100% of fair trade certified ingredients. The one in the middle is what you're gonna more typically see on the floor here. Um, this is anything above 20% of the dry weight of your ingredients within the product. Um, this label, you may see it with ingredients, meaning a brand may be using, let's say, cocoa, sugar, and vanilla that are all fair trade certified within a product. Um, so then they'll call out ingredients. Let's say you're seeing a chocolate bar where only the cocoa is certified. You may also see, instead of ingredients, it'll say cocoa there, or it'll call out coconut, or something specific. Um, we do hear brands sometimes get a little nervous about the fact that they can't carry the 100%. I'll be honest with you, when we talk to consumers, this actually prompts them more so to turn over that product and look at the ingredients panel and do a bit more research as to what ingredients is that brand talking about that they actually certified in there. Um, and then finally, on the right-hand side, is the ability to talk about fair trade certified product, even if you're under that 20% threshold. Um, there are some brands who it's just really important to them that all the cocoa they source is fair trade certified, or all of the sugar that they use in their products is fair trade certified, whether or not they're gonna get that consumer recognition piece of a full seal. So we came up, we come up with other ways and we work with brands to ensure that they're getting kind of the most bang for their buck and being able to talk about using certified products in their, on their packaging um, in interesting and um, creative ways that are still gonna get them that recognition with consumers. So myth number two, you do not have to have 100% certified product in order to use, our, to, um, use fair trade. And then another big one is this myth that fair trade certification is a really long, arduous, complicated process that you have to go through. Especially in our industry where we are saturated with uh, certifications that require audit after audit after audit. Um, I totally understand hearing this from partners. But the real reality is fair trade is a pretty turnkey process depending on the ingredient we're looking at. If you're looking at something that's a well-established, well-known ingredient, cocoa, coffee, bananas, sugar, tea, those kind of things, odds are you're probably already working with a supplier that has fair trade certified ingredients available to you. All you have to do is ask them. If they're not, or if you're working with a really specific quality product um, or a specific, uh, specific makeup of a product, uh, we absolutely can go in and certify a supplier for you or a producer for you. We're a market-based program, which means we're not gonna go out as much as we wanna work with every single farmer and worker in the world. We're not gonna go out to a group of farmers and say, hey, we wanna certify you unless we have a buyer ready to go. Because it's unfair to go to a group of farmers and say, please do all of this work to come into compliance with certification without a guarantee that they're going to be receiving those premium dollars back. So that is an option for you as a brand that's available to you. But generally, certification is pretty turnkey. First step, source from a certified ingredients from a registered supplier. Um, as easy as starting the conversation with your supplier, starting the conversation with myself or one of my colleagues, we can look into what ingredients might be a good turn on for you guys. 
Second is to sign an agreement with Fair Trade USA. Um, this is what triggers us to start verifying your transactions, which is what makes it a certified transaction, um, so that you have that third party verification. Um, we are all really, I think, blessed to be in an industry with very conscious consumers, but unfortunately that's also becoming quite a bit of a challenge because it's no longer enough to just say you're doing the right thing. Consumers are demanding that we have some other person checking your work and making sure that you're carrying out the promises that you're making. So that's where the agreement with a third party like Fair Trade USA comes in so that we can verify those transactions and give you the full certification. And then finally, working with us to register your products, we work to make sure you're being as transparent on pack, but also getting as much bang for your buck as you can on pack. Um, so we do some packaging approval and work with your creative team, and then setting you up to do those quarterly reportings, those quarterly transactions with us. I will say one more tidbit about this myth around certification being really complicated is, like I mentioned before, we work with quite a lot of big suppliers who probably already have um, certified ingredients that you probably could turn on and start sourcing. Also, there's a lot of fair trade certified ingredients that currently are not being sold on fair trade terms. In cocoa, for example, only about half of the cocoa produced throughout the world by fair trade farmers is actually being sold on fair trade terms, meaning Farmers are doing 100% of the work to be in 100% compliance with that standard day in and day out all year long, but they're only receiving premium back for about 50% of that. Same in coffee. So a lot of these industries where there's very well-known problems within the supply chain um, and price crisis, crises that we see, there is a huge volume that's available for you guys to already be starting. So there are some, some buffers as well in, not only is this a really turnkey process, but there is quite a bit already waiting out there for brands to be a part of. So I just wanted to leave you guys um, with those three big myths, not overwhelm you with a ton of information today, but hopefully I've sparked a little bit of um, interest in what it would mean to be fair trade certified. Um, if you think this is something that aligns with your brand, it's part of your story, it's an importance to you to have for your consumers and also within your products, please feel free to um, take note of my information or come talk to me afterwards. I'm more than happy to start the conversation, take a look at what this would look like for you specifically um, and what your path to certification would be. Thank you guys so much.